it's had a little bit of a snake bitten history. It's a little bit of a mystery, but um, the consensus seems to have it that it was the idea of a doctor who served in southern France during World War I, and he became taken with uh, the French medieval architecture and castles and that sort of thing. And so he decided that when he came back to Birmingham, he would build a castle, and it was built in 1927. And then about 1940, um, when the country was gearing up to fight communism, we'd already had the Red Scare of the 1920s, so we were already fearful of communism. In 1940, it was rumored that the communists had been meeting there. It was raided by the Birmingham police. They found a letter written by somebody who had worked for the uh, Tennessee Valley Authority. And so it, it lent fodder to the idea that, yeah, uh, uh, the letter had said that there had been communist meetings in the, in the Quinlan Castle. So when they became word of that, it, it was a huge scandal. And that's when it changed its name from Quinlan Castle to the War Royal Arms Apartment. In the 1930s, Birmingham had the largest Communist Party in the South. The southern headquarters of the Communist Party had moved from Chattanooga to Birmingham in 1929 because of its huge working class population. Most of the Communists in Birmingham were African American, and that the backbone of the movement were black women, was black women. So it was a real presence um, in Birmingham, and if you're afraid of it, then you, um, then you had something to work with. And of course, its connection, the Communist Party was opposed to racism and sexism and those kinds of things. So that intersection of race and communism and class added more volatility to the whole issue. So the, when I got interested in this, I was the first to start preservationist, basically, for the city of Birmingham in 1983. And a couple of years later, I researched the building and put it on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, and it was empty at that time and had been empty for a long time, probably throughout the 70s. The owners were able to renovate it and that lasted for maybe 10 years, I'm not sure. But it's been empty again for 15 years, probably. Um, the city of Birmingham has owned it since the 90s, early 90s, when it kind of went belly up again. But the thing that's really been going on with that building in the last 40, 30 years is that Southern Research Institute, which is across the street, has always wanted to get its hands on that building and tear it down for parking. So the way it is here in lots of places is that even though something's on the National Register of Historic Places anywhere in the country doesn't mean it can't be torn down, it can be torn down tomorrow. And so if they could get a hold of it, they could get it torn down. Eventually they prevailed in the late 90s and got permission to tear it down. It might have been the next day, two days, three days later, not more than that, I don't think. Came out in the newspaper that, oops, Southern Research didn't have the money. So they'd gone through all of this. You know, then they had the opportunity, and thank goodness, they weren't able to pull it off. So there it sits, um, basically, you know, with a wrecking ball held over its head all the time. I think it could be a number of things if you can figure out how to do it mm -hmm. with the traffic problems, the engineering problems, just apartments, condominiums. There have been all kinds of, of ideas. I think this building itself lends itself to all kinds of stuff if you can just figure out how to do it that Southern Research wants since they own it. So it's, it's definitely a building that intrigues people who are not or don't think of themselves as particularly interested in buildings or, or architecture or, or even Birmingham because who would expect a castle to be sitting in the middle on a hill of Birmingham? 